Hello, I'm Emma Brownlee uh, and I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about music A-level at Cold U. We study the Educa specification. Uh, we don't offer an AS, so it's a two-year course and it's taught um, with year 12 and 13 combined. Reason for that is it um, gives us more, more students uh, a different range of instruments for doing practical work. So ensemble performing and working collaboratively in composition work too. There are lots of reasons to study A-level music. Um, first one being that it's such a broad subject. Um, you know, there's lots of aspects of it which students find very interesting. And we cover enough styles and genres that there's something there for everybody. You develop key transferable skills throughout the course uh, in confidence, creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, problem solving, to name a few. These are skills that employers um, and universities are all looking for. Um, it's very varied. So you've got music theory, there's the historical element, uh, there's the creative aspect of composition uh, and performing, as well as practical skills. It shows that you're an interesting person with a wide range of abilities, and it's something different that helps you stand out from the crowd. It looks good on your UCAS application. It complements other A-levels. And if you learn an instrument or you've spent, you know, the last few years learning an instrument, you've already got 30% of the course covered through having those lessons and doing your practice. This course plays to your strengths and you can opt to focus more on performance or composition and change the weighting um, in the course as well, which you'll see in a minute. Choosing A-level music does not commit you to pursuing it forever. So it might not be a career choice um, to be a musician, but it can be a pathway um, to musical study if you want to. All you students who studied music A-level have gone on to study music, music performance, um, music technology and sound design, theatre studies, fashion, English literature and business. The course is assessed um, in the same way as GCSE in three different areas. So performance, composition, and then listening and appraising. The weightings change slightly depending on how you view your strengths. If you consider yourself stronger at performance than composition, you can opt to have 35% of the course weighted for performance. You would do a longer recital. The recitals are assessed live by visiting examiner. And you're looking to be, you know, sort of grade six minimum, really, um, grade seven or eight to, to, to achieve the top bands um, and the grade six minimum for performance. If you think actually the composition are where your strengths lie, then you would complete, complete more compositional pieces. Um, they're the same as GCSE in that you have your briefs that are set by the exam board and then you also have free choice. The times are slightly longer, obviously, if you're doing a 35%. Then there's the listening and appraising paper, which is worth 40%, same as the GCSE. And in that paper, the kinds of kind of questions and skills you show are analysing set works with a score, uh, responding through extended responses, um, talking about the kind of wider context, so sort of small essays. You'd have unprepared extracts of music where you're going to answer questions with or without a score. And you have comparison questions comparing two pieces of music. The listening appraising, the 40%. This is broken down into three areas of study. There's the Western classical development of the symphony. We study two set works for that, along with lots and lots of wider listening to show how the symphony developed from the beginning of the classical period to the 20th century. We look at um, rock and pop for our area of study too. So you study the history of popular music from 1960 to 2000. And that includes genres such as pop and um, rock and it's all, all its different subgenres, folk and country, soul, disco and funk. We look at um, how society impacted on the development of musical styles and genres and um, what was happening in the world at the time looking at how technology impacted on how music was recorded and, and shared and um, how genres themselves, or how rock music you know, changed through the decades. 
Area of Study 3 is into the 20th century. So we study styles such as Impressionism, Expressionism, Neoclassicism. And for that, we look at two set works, one by Poulenc and one by Debussy. So there's a huge range of musical styles, um, pieces and composers. In terms of um, professions that you could then go on to, um, firstly, all universities and conservatoires, all music colleges accept and welcome students with A-level music. You could look at being a performer or a composer. You could look at um, other medias, TV, radio, um, video gaming, uh, music administration, retail, law and accountancy. You could look at being um, a teacher or a lecturer yourself. And then it can also support lots of other career choices that are not directly related to music, such as law, journalism, economics, commerce, media studies, management, for, to name a few. We take every student uh, who, who wishes to, to pursue a love of music as an individual, and we would sort of base our decision to accept people onto the course on an individual basis. Um, but ideally, we're looking for students who have studied an instrument, I'd say to around grade five at the end of GCSE, who will be looking at to complete kind of grade six or seven throughout the A-level course. Um, grade five theory is, does help, but it's not essential. Um, I suppose the, the main thing is, is that you're passionate about music and you have that dedication to keep practicing and to keep improving. I thought it would be helpful for you to hear from students who've actually studied the course. So I've asked for some feedback for two of our year 13 students um, regarding how they found the course and what they've enjoyed. This is Olivia Seal, who's year 13, and she said, I decided to take a level of music as it was a subject I was interested in, not necessarily from a career point of view, but because it's always been something I've enjoyed. I was learning the clarinet anyway and wanted to try and take my grade eight before I left school. When I realised that this would also count for 35% of the A-level, it just made sense to take it as an option. I can truly say I've received a huge amount of support from my music teachers, receiving detailed feedback on my composition and support with balancing revision and workload. Music for me has been a great subject to take. Yes, it's hard and there's a great deal of work involved, but it's also something you can thoroughly enjoy and can be seen as a bit of an escape. Daisy Roberts said about A-level music, I knew I'd enjoy my music A-level before I even started it, as I have been very involved with many extracurricular music clubs throughout my years at school. I was not disappointed and as well as taking an enjoyable class, I have learned a lot. A-level music has allowed me to find an appreciation for many musicians and pieces of music I may not have discovered otherwise, especially in classical music, as I had not actively listened to as much of it. I enjoyed learning about how music has shaped our society and more intricately, how music is created and the elements and processes that go towards creating a memorable and enjoyable piece of music. I hope this presentation has offered you an insight into how the course is structured, about what you'll be studying and about how you'll be studying it if you choose to take it on for the two years. If you've got any other questions or you want some advice about whether or not it's it's for you, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with myself or Mr Very at the email addresses on the screen. Thank you very much.